Hey guys, doing a video on Aptasia here. Uh, wanted to talk about one of the biggest pests that we have in the hobby and this thing just takes over your tank if you let it. Um, I've dealt with it. Many of us have dealt with this. It's, you're not alone if you're dealing with it. I will say I didn't deal with this until the last few years with my last couple tanks that I've, I've worked on. Uh, mostly because all my other tanks up to that point, I was very diligent in the last couple one I've, I've gotten lazy and um, what I mean by diligent is I would scrub the entire coral with a toothbrush before it went into my tank of course with the exception of the flesh scrub the scrub the frag plug if it was a hammer or something I would scrub the skeleton up to the flesh and that eliminated all pest problems, essentially. I mean, you, I scrubbed it clean, I dipped it, um, acclimated it, and, and really just eliminated my issues up front. I got lazy with the last couple tanks, didn't do that, and as a result, got Aptasia. So I battled it a couple different ways. Um, I tried commercial products. Um, I've also tried some of those home-based remedies out there, things that people just kind of use that they have at their disposal. Um, I've also tried several live options, uh, you know, natural predators. And uh, I'm going to go through my experience with each of these options and kind of show you what options are out there. And um, for me, whether they worked or didn't work, um, when I utilize them. So we're going to go through a few different things here. Um, and, uh, hopefully you can leave this with some knowledge and benefit. So the, the first thing we're going to get into here, um, is commercial products. Uh, we're going to talk through kind of some of the, some of the products that are out there on the market that you can buy, uh, to kill Aptasia. So the commercial product that I have experience with is Joe's Juice, and they're all kind of they're all kind of similar. And if you look at the different ones out there, they're all fairly similar on what they're going to ask you to do with the product. Um, Joe's Juice is the one that I used. Um, I did have some concern about the amount of product going into the tank, so um, I will say I only used it a couple times. Um, and I'll get to the results on, on the anemones that I used, or the uh, Aptasia I used it on here in a moment. But I will say the ones that were very difficult to kill with this stuff is the one that is on the cliff side of the rock work, or as you can see from these Aptasia here, they are kind of up underneath the rock. Their base is up underneath the rock, you can see there. Um, those are the difficult ones to kill. Uh, not impossible, but very difficult. And I will also say when I was using uh, this product, trying to kill the anemones on the cliff side of the rock, uh, some of it dropped off onto my carpet anemone and it burnt it. Uh, the anemone retracted quickly. Um, and when it reopened again, there was a discoloration uh, and burn there. So... There is some concerns for me around using these types of products when you're trying to get those types of anemones uh, or Aptasia anemones, as well as if you are um, trying to kill an Aptasia in the middle of like a Zua colony, there's a chance you're going to kill some of the Zuas as well. So keep that in mind. Um, you got to be very careful with this so you don't harm other inhabitants in your tank. Um, I know it says it's 100% reef safe, but uh, I did have a negative experience with it burning my carpet anemone. Uh, as for the results, it did kill some of the anemones, some of the Aptasian anemones, uh, but it really depended on how much product I got onto slash in the Aptasia. Um, some of them didn't die, some of them did. So it did work on some, not on all. Um, and ultimately, I stopped using it out of concern for, one, the amount of product I was putting in my tank, but two, um, after harming my carpet and enemy, um, it just, it wasn't the product for me. 
So the next thing I'm gonna get into here is a lot of those home-based remedies, boiling water, vinegar, lemon juice, calc wasser, and super glue. So boiling water, vinegar, lemon juice, all the same premise. You inject the anemone with this product and it kills the anemone. Um, I've tried boiling RO water and injecting the anemone. I've tried vinegar, I've tried lemon juice, um, and I didn't really have any results. Um, some of the aphtasia went away for anywhere from one to five days, but they came right back. Uh, so for me, I don't think the, those, either of those three home remedies, the boiling water, uh, the vinegar and the lemon juice. And of course with the boiling water, you got to inject it while it's boiling. You, you, you gotta, you gotta cook that aphtasia. Um, none of those worked for me. I, uh, they, all the anemones came back. So that was not one that I continued on with on any three of those. Um, I did try it for a few days and went around and hit several anemones, but, uh, those aphtasia came right back. All right. So moving on to the next home remedy here. Um, that's going to be the calc wasser. Um, I've personally never tried this one. Um, the process is you mix it up into a paste, put it into a syringe, and you coat the aptation anemone with it and essentially burn it to death. Um, I've never done it uh, for a couple reasons. One, I don't put calc wasser straight into my tank. Um, and I'm con was concerned about throwing off the chemistry of my tank. I didn't want to put something into the tank that's going to change that water chemistry. You know, you use a little bit of it on an enemy here and there, not a big deal. If you've got several and you're going to put it on several anemones, um, it it's going to be a big deal. And then of course, you're going to have the same similar struggles as you would with Joe's juice or any of those other commercial products, if you drop it on a neighboring coral, it's gonna burn it. If you uh, are trying to get rid of an aptasia in the middle of a zoa colony, you're gonna kill some of the zo zoas around it if you just douse it with calc wasser. So the last uh, home remedy I'm gonna talk about here is super glue. Um, this process is very simple. You take the super glue gel, you cover the entire Aptasia and enemy, and you essentially smother it and block out all light and it dies. Um, this profit process um, is very difficult to use, if not impossible, if you're trying to do a Aptasia and enemy in the middle of say a Zua colony, you're, you're gonna end up damaging the Zuas nearby if this is your goal, because you're gonna have to cover that entire aptasia and enemy um, so that is a limiting factor on it um, something else to consider is the look of the tank um, you're going to end up with white spots white super glue spots everywhere and it, it does look kind of ugly um, later on you can pull those white those uh little white spots off after the anemone dies you're gonna have to give it a while or you can just let it sit there long enough until your lights cook a good core line on top of it and uh, it, it goes away. Now I have used this before and it did work. It did kill the Aptasia. Um, the reason I discontinued using it was because of the disappealing look of the tank. I did not like all that uh, white spots all over the tank. So. Um, does work, just uh, doesn't necessarily give the best aesthetic to the tank. All right, so the last options here we're going to go through are our live options. Aptasia eating file fish, peppermint shrimp, Bergia nudibranch, and copper band butterfly fish. I saw this great little image on uh, Google images when I was searching and I loved it so I grabbed it and threw it in here um, just kind of gives you that one quick look at what natural predators are out there that are going to go after Aptasia 
So the first one is the Aptasia eating file fish. This fish is reef caution and may nip at corals, which is the biggest drawback to this, this fish. They're a good community fish um, for a tank of any size. Um, and there's been stories of many successes with this fish. I personally tried this fish, put it in my tank, went on vacation, came home a week later and found four ACAN colonies had been devastated. Even my yellow rainbows and scooped it out. It went into the toilet and um, that was my experience with the Aptasia eating file fish. Again, any fish, you know, there, there's chance that it may peck, it may not peck. Uh, the one I got did and, and I took a loss for it. So if that's an option you're gonna choose, make sure you keep an eye on it. And um, if you see it pecking, take action. All right, so then we have the peppermint shrimp. Um, these are very well known to consume Aptasia and widely used throughout the hobby. Uh, depending on the size of your outbreak, you may have to have a large amount of peppermint shrimp in there to resolve your issue. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, these guys are an added benefit to your cleanup crew. So they're going to eat leftover food and things like that and help keep your tank clean. With that, if you provide them too many other food sources, such as leftover fish food, they're not going to eat the Aptasia because they're going to be full from what, what else you're feeding them. Also be aware there are lookalikes that will not touch Aptasia. Make sure you know what you're buying before you buy it. Um, and then know your tank mates. Some of these, these are small shrimp. Some of your fish in there will go after them and then they will just eat them and it was pointless to buy them. So from my perspective, I've tried these. I put eight into my tank um, to try to work on Aptasia. And I didn't have that big of an outbreak, maybe a dozen in there at the time. Um, they worked on it a little bit. It, it never went away for me. Um, they just didn't, didn't keep up with it. Uh, long enough for the Aptasia to go away. So for me, um, I think, yes, these will work, uh, but you're gonna have to you're gonna put a good amount of them in there and make sure that your feeding is done in a way that uh, you don't overfeed and fill them up. You wanna make sure that they are hungry enough to eat that Aptasia. All right, so the Bergia Nudibranch, um, these can be rather expensive costing around 20 bucks a piece and they are very very small very slow moving very slow to take care of the problem small guys eat slowly um, and you're going to need several so it's it can be a rather expensive way to go um, the biggest issue with these is depending on what you have in your tank especially if you have some some wrasses and, and other tank mates this is going to be a 20 dollar snack you're gonna put five in there in five minutes, all five have been eaten. You just pay $100 to feed your fish for the day and they're probably still hungry. So make sure the tank mates, you know what they are before you put these guys in. Um, also, these guys only eat Aptasia. Once the Aptasia is gone, they die because they don't have no food source. So when the Aptasia returns, you're back to square one. Um, as for results, I've never used these guys solely because I keep wrasses and things like that in my tank and I don't want to buy a hundred dollar snack for my fish. So um, reports are they work very well. Um, I've just personally never used them. All right, lastly is the copper band butterfly fish. Um, this fish is my favorite option. Um, not only do I think it's one of the most beautiful fish in the entire hobby. For me, it is the most beautiful fish in the entire hobby. I just, I love this fish. I put it in every tank I have. Um, this is a reef caution fish due to its potential to pick at small anemones, tube worms, feather dusters, things like that. Um, obviously, as you heard from my video, I'm acclimating this guy. For the first couple days, he picked all the feather dusters off my live rock, all the little baby ones. Um, and that's what he ate for a couple days. So 
they do have a tendency to pick at those things. Um, I've also heard in the hobby about them picking at clams here and there. I've had them with clams and never had that experience, but uh, if other hobbyists have, that is something to keep in mind. Um, this fish is a peaceful community fish, but very difficult to get to eat. You need to make sure that you do everything that you can to get this guy to eat and start feeding. Otherwise, you won't be successful, and unfortunately, it will die out of starvation. So... Uh, if you want some pointers on that, I've done two other videos on this. Um, this fish here and then the other fish in my other tank, I did a video on each of them on, on what I did to um, get them going and, and how I acclimated them and got them eating. Um, also, this fish isn't really suited for a small aquarium. So if you have uh, a small aquarium, it's probably not the fish you want. Um, and of course, I always do aquarium size by dimensions, not gallons. Um, and this one, um, it's always been a 100% success rate for me. Anytime I've had Aptasia in my last two tanks, when I put this guy in, Aptasia was gone within a week or two. It just went after it, took it out, and 100% uh, success rate. So this fish, very successful. Uh, when it comes to Aptasia. All right, if you have any comments, leave them in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, hope you liked the video. Hope you got something out of it. Check out some of my other content. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, I'll get more out for you guys soon. Thank you.